over the last uh, year and a half, we have been looking for signs of water ice in the interior of the permanently shadowed craters at the North Pole of Mercury. What we found is that there are large deposits of icy-like material that the infrared laser can see as bright reflections, but they are usually surrounded by darker material, in fact, much blacker than anything other than coal. Uh, so we were puzzled at first, why are we seeing all of this dark material in places where it's cold enough for ice to be trapped? After about a year, uh, as we got closer to the North Pole, we saw extremely bright reflections. We said, aha, I think we know what we're seeing here. We know now that the material underneath the dark blankets and the little bit that is exposed uh, that's bright, is indeed water ice or uh, <laughs> some unknown substance that's never been seen before uh, that looks like water ice. We have a laser uh, on the orbiter, Messenger, which has about the power of a flashlight, but it sends out infrared pulses eight times a second. These pulses then uh, bounce off the surface in a uh, footprint that's about the size of a house and a little bit of light comes back to the spacecraft from the surface and is detected with a very sensitive detector. So we can see into the dark with our flashlight and we can also measure the topography of the surface from the spacecraft. That was our primary goal. With the topography, of course, we can then model the illumination at any time uh, and predict what the illumination is in the interior of these craters uh, very accurately. This also gives us a way to determine the temperature inside these craters for which we have no direct measurement. But these temperatures are extremely cold and they're surrounded by very hot mountain peaks. Putting this together with uh, the thermal models and with the neutron spectrometer results, we pretty much have conclusive evidence. What Messenger set out to do among other things, was to test the hypothesis that, yes, Mercury even can contain materials that were delivered to it from the outer solar system. And this tells us a lot about the story of what happened to all of the planets in the inner solar system, including Earth. Uh, we would like to have a similar story uh, from our observations of the Moon. However, the Moon has, for various reasons, not provided us anything as clear as the deposits on Mercury. What it tells us is that uh, the inner planets of the solar system and, and probably uh, some of the moons of the large planets have received uh, from cometary and, and uh, ice-rich asteroids a wealth of chemicals, not just water, but the building blocks of life. What we know about the Mercury environment is that it's extremely hostile to life and it's unlikely that anything uh, could have formed a connected uh, active system, which is what, after all, life would require.